Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the October Louisville Town Council meeting. It's a privilege to be here tonight, and it's a pleasure to see so many folks in the audience tonight. Welcome to those who, of you who are watching at home tonight. We're streaming live on Facebook, and of course, we're streaming worldwide on LouisvilleNC.net. So wherever you are, we're glad you're here to be with us this evening. We'll start our meeting tonight with an invocation led by Bo Howe, followed by Pledge of Allegiance, led by Council Member Robert Green. Please stand if you're able and join us. <coughs> Even though we're worldwide, I'm not going to say the invocation in French. <laughs> Let us pray. God, our Father, we give you thanks for this beautiful day that you've given to us, reminding us of who is in charge of this world and this universe. We give you thanks for your many blessings of life. We thank you for the people who are gathered here today. We thank you for our citizens. We thank you for our staff. We thank you for this elected body and for those who are willing to serve on an elected body such as this. We ask you now to be with us during the course of this meeting, to give us wisdom, give us courage as we go about the business of this town. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll also begin our meeting with our traditional roll call of council members. Good evening. I'm Ed Smith. Welcome, everybody. Good evening. I'm Sandra Mock. I'm Mike Horn. Robert Green. Good evening, Marcy Gallman. And I'm Fred Franklin. It's a pleasure to serve as one of your council members. Councilman Zinger uh, will be coming in a little bit late tonight, so uh, he should be here shortly. Also with us tonight is our town staff, town manager Hank Perkins, town attorney Bo Howell in the back, public works director George Hauser, uh, our clerk Mrs. Joyce Walker, and our town finance director Ms. Pam Morell. Protecting us this evening to serve and protect our Sergeant Stringer, Good to see you, PJ, and Deputy Clark. Glad, glad you guys are here tonight to be with us. Very good. Mrs. Walker, have there any been any additions or changes to the agenda since we sent it out? No, I'm shocked. I am too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so with that, we'll entertain a motion to approve. So move. Second. Mr. Smith makes the motion. Ms. Mock makes the second. Any additional discussion? All those in favor, <laughs> and flavor too, I guess you could do that. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed, thank you. That's unanimous. <laughs> Hank, if you'll walk us through the consent agenda, please. Yes, sir. Uh, the consent agenda consists of three items. The first is resolution 2019-067, acceptance and approval of monthly financials for August 2019. Second is the approval of council briefing and action minutes from September 5th, 2019. And finally, Approval of council meeting minutes from September 12th, 2019. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the consent agenda are items that generally come before the council on a regular basis. We take them as a group for expediency sake. Any council member can ask for any item to be pulled off and discussed separately. Otherwise, we take them as a group. Council members, what's your pleasure? <coughs> motion to approve. Second. Mr. Franklin makes the motion. Ms. Mock makes the second. <coughs> any additional discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. That is unanimous. <coughs> Mrs. Walker, you have a resolution for us. Yes, we have resolution 2019071, recognizing October 2019 as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And because it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we all have our pink on. <laughs> and we want to thank everyone uh, for. There are a number of folks, myself included, who are breast cancer survivors, so we thank you for the support. Would you like to briefly read the resolution? Well, I can do that if I can find it. There it is. Whereas <coughs> breast cancer is the second most common cancer in women after skin cancer, and whereas breast cancer is about 100 times more common in women than men, one in eight women will be diagnosed with the disease and diagnosis increase as patients get older. And whereas mammography rates have more than doubled for women age 50 and older and breast cancer deaths have declined, and whereas doctors <coughs> estimate that about 5 to 10 percent of breast cancers are hereditary, and individuals whose family history puts them at risk 
uh, for breast cancer should discuss with their doctor or qualified health professional the proper prevention and early diagnosis strategies. And whereas National Breast Cancer Awareness Month remains dedicated to increasing public knowledge about the importance of early detection of breast cancer diagnosis and treatment. <coughs> and whereas the awareness campaign is sending out several key messages, most notably the importance of early detection through annual mammography screening for women over 40. And whereas the American Cancer Society has searched endlessly for cure through vital research and has the mammoth task of educating our community and all Americans of the risks of breast cancer. And whereas taking advantage of early detection methods such as mammography and clinical breast exams could help the breast cancer death rate drop by approximately 30%. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Louisville Town Council does hereby recognize October 2019 as Breast Cancer Awareness Month and that the Louisville Town Council urges all women and their families to get the facts about breast cancer and join in celebrating all successes and mem memorialize lost battles. Council members, entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Smith makes the motion. Ms. Mock makes the second. Any additional discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? That is unanimous. Ms. Walker, you have an appointment for us. Yes, we do. We have appointment order 2019-006, <coughs> appointing Barbara Hudgens to the Louisville Recycling Committee. Very good. Make a motion to approve. Second. Ms. Mock makes the motion. Ms. Goldman makes the second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Thank you. That is unanimous. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be the first opportunity of two times this evening at our public forums, should you wish to share your thoughts with the council. Uh, please come forward, state your name, give us your address, and, uh, and uh, share with us what may be on your mind. Anybody wish to address the council? Good evening. My name is Mary Gaines. I live at 7270 LaLanda Drive, and I'm here on behalf of the Louisville Historical Society and, more importantly, the Nissen House. Uh, and Susan is passing out some pictures for you to look at where we started and uh, the uh, exterior where it is now. We don't have interior pictures, but uh, we are excited to let you know that a certificate of occupancy has been issued for the first floor of the Nissen House. Yay! Hey. We are, we are very excited about that. We now have lights, heat, heating and cooling, phone and internet service with Wi-Fi, security system, ADA parking and ramp, ADA bathrooms, catering kitchen with warming oven, refrigerator and dishwasher, and just had the damaged old wood floors repaired and restored. Uh, we are doing the final touch-ups on, on the interior at the moment. Plan to move in furniture next week, and we have been very fortunate that we have uh, received wonderful donations of Victorian furniture, uh, sofa, some um, marble top tables, some other things. Also, we have a hall tree, lamps, and dishware things that have been donated, uh, and we are very grateful for, for those things. All the rooms have been painted, and uh, they have names now. We have, first of all, the Nissen Family Parlor, the Renwick Olive Room, and you'll see those on the floor plan that's attached, the Cabbage Rose Room, and the Downing Straw Room. These room names represent the paint colors, which are a new, near duplication of the original colors in, in the house. We took all the paint down to see what the original colors were. In removing the paint in the Nissen family parlor, we discovered a, a decorative design on the wall, a line, and a faux wood design. Uh, we have protected that with a wash coat of paint and hope later to be able to reproduce and restore that. It's an expensive, time-consuming thing and difficult to find an artist who can do it. 
We have established a Nissen House Business Planning Committee to set up a business plan, rules and regulations, rental rates, and marketing. Uh, retired business executives with SCORE are advising with the plan, and we were chosen by the Louisville Clemens Leadership Council to help with marketing. We plan to open the house soon for <coughs> rentals in a comfortable, historic setting for business meetings and conferences, family dinners or reunions, small weddings and receptions, renting one or more rooms or the entire four rooms with the catering kitchen as, uh, as is needed. Our plans a little later include working with schools, especially Louisville Elementary, for educational project, historical tours, and events. We say thank you again to the Town Council, the Historical Society, the community, and numerous individuals who have contributed time, money, labor, and materials. We are very grateful to Mrs. June Ficklin, great-granddaughter of George Elias Nissen, the uh, builder of the house. Uh, Mrs. Ficklin is now deceased, but to her and the Nissen family heirs for major monetary donations to the house. This would never have happened. We would not have been able to complete the interior at this period without that help and all the other help that we have received. We will be scheduling open houses for the council, <coughs> members of the Historical Society, and the community in the near, near future. And if anyone wants a personal tour, just let Susan or me know. And Susan brought her hook. She said, if I, we're so excited to talk about this. She said, if I exceeded my three minutes, <laughs> that she was going to take her hook and pull me away. So uh, that's why I read so fast. But thank you all so much. Jeff, uh, you and I talked recently. Uh, every one of you, we do appreciate this. And we are just so excited. Uh, I think our work with the house predates most of the council. <laughs> Uh, so ten, it, a little over ten years now. So we are we are glad to to see the end uh, end of the end of the tunnel, the light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. I think it's quite a way from standing in the mud trying to get that up on yeah. a hoist to move it down the road, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I was talking about that actually today. I think it was New Year's Day, was. 2008. Was that one? I think it was. I remember it two years, uh, just remember it being New Year's. Yeah, it was New Year's Day and it was cold out. But, you know, I, I just say these guys have really, you talk about, they ran a marathon. You know, this wasn't a sprint. This was a marathon. And they did never quit and they never quit. We had the down economy. We had all that stuff and they kept plugging along. It is a major accomplishment for them to have a CO. And so I just want to say, well done. And your tenacity, well done. We're all excited for you. Anybody else wish to address the council at this time? Anybody else? Commissioner Kaplan, good evening. Glad to see you join us this evening, Commissioner Ted Kaplan. Do you bring us greetings from anybody except Ted Kaplan? <laughs> Very good will <laughs> as, you, as you just have just seen, there's a lot of goodwill in this room. So welcome. We're glad that you're attending our meeting. And any time, you're certainly welcome to be here with us. Thank you for all you do for for uh, furthering our cause with the county downtown. I know you've been a great friend of, of our communities. With that, we'll move on. We have no public hearings this evening, no evidentiary hearings this evening, no annexation requests this evening. What? That's terrible. We, we, have <laughs> one. we need to stir one up, don't we? Uh, no preliminary site plan approvals, no unfinished business. Under new business, Joyce, you have the first item. First item we have is resolution 2019072, and that's accepting the Louisville Points of Interest brochure authored by the Louisville <coughs> Beautification Committee. Um, Council had an opportunity to take a look at what was sent to them last time. Um, Mr. Franklin asked that we add, add the information on the local equestrian farm, which has been added. And I believe the mayor's uh, addition has been added. So this is the final version as of today. As of any time in the future, the beautification committee will be adding to this brochure. Um, it's 
not just points of interest in the town, but also those that are near the town. And their, their thought was that it would be very beneficial to current residents as well as visitors. I think we have a few members here, if they will stand, because they worked really hard on this brochure. Council members, we're uh, entertaining a motion to uh, accept our Louisville points of interest brochure. So moved. Second. Uh, Mr. Smith makes a motion. Mr. Franklin makes the second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Thank you. That's unanimous. Um, thank you guys a whole lot. Please pass back to your committee all our, our appreciation for all their hard work. I know that uh, um, you know what, what many people don't realize is that Louisville functions with a number of committees and those committees work every month to bring items like this forward and do our planning and do our public safety and do a number of other functions that help uh, keep our town moving forward. They all do it out of love for our community because they're all doing it as volunteers. So thank you all very much and please extend our thanks to your committee next time you meet, um, if you would please. Hank. Okay. Next item is uh, consideration of resolution. Oh, we need to have a, yeah, we did, thank you. Yep. <laughs> get tripped up here. I got, I got lots of eyes watching me. <laughs> you All right. Next is consideration of resolution 2019068, setting a public hearing for Thursday, November 14th, 2019, to rezone public uh, rezone property located at 6841 Dexter Drive from RS20S to RS9 for the Winston Salem Forsyth County Schools. Any questions for Hank? Yeah. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Zinger makes the motion. Ms. Mock makes the second. Any ad additional discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. That's aye. unanimous. Hank, number two. Okay. Uh, C is resolute consideration of 2019066, setting a public hearing for Thursday, November 14th, 2019, for UDO L. 160 to update the unified development ordinances to provide for additional notifications to property owners. Hank, just give us a quick thumbnail on this for the folks who may not be aware of it. Hey, Bo, how about giving us a thumbnail on this for those <laughs> who may not be aware of it? This is intended to do a few things is to provide additional information in the cases of um, subdivision um, approvals or rezonings. Presently, we uh, require a notification by letter to folks who are 200 feet, I think, or is it 100? Adjoining folks that are adjoining oh, landowners only, and this is going to modify that to to increase that to 500 feet out from uh, the uh, subject property, so that more people will receive notifications of hearings. It also contains some components with regard to uh, providing notices uh, electronically and otherwise. So that's that's what this is all about. Very good, and we'll be voting on this ordinance next month. Correct? Yes. Thank you. Motion to approve the resolution, uh, 2019-066. Second. Mr. Franklin makes the motion. Mr. Zinger makes the second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. That is unanimous. Pam, if you'll walk us through the financial transactions you want us to make. First, I want to make a point about this number in here. Last week, we talked about these these numbers as being ten thousand dollars less than this number. This is this was three hundred sixty nine thousand dollars last last week. On Friday, we had some clarification from the architects on reimbursables for the project. Um, there are some things that are going to be not a part of the fees in the three hundred sixty nine thousand dollars in in the project itself. Things that will be covered that are reimbursable would be. Um, any permitting fees, they'll handle the permitting, but they don't pay the fees. So we'll end up having to, to write the checks for the fees, and then they will use those to, to pay and, and do the permitting for it. Printing reproductions, plots, and standard form documentation. This would be for the bidding for the project, for the forms specifications that the um, architects send out for contractors to be able to bid on the project in the future. Postage, handling, and delivering of permitting and bid documents only. FedEx or rush deliveries, 
the newspaper ads for the biddings and pre-qualifications, renderings, physical models, mock-ups, professional photography, and representation materials requested by the owner or required for the project, or finally, other similar project-related expenditures. $10,000 is a number that we feel pretty good it will not exceed, and um, we will only be spending the money that is billed to the project is a reimbursable, not necessarily the entire $10,000. Any questions for Hank? Okay. Pam, you want us to go ahead and amend our capital project ordinance and in that amount? Yeah, um, we have ordinance 2019045 to amend the community center capital project ordinance document to increase the budgeted design fees by $379,000. Entertain a motion? Motion approved. Second. Mr. Smith makes the motion, Ms. Mock makes the second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. That's unanimous. Okay. Secondly, we have Ordinance 2019046. This is to increase the budgeted line item for design fees by $379,000 to cover the contract with ADW Architects. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Mr. Franklin makes a motion. Mr. Zinger makes the second. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, any opposed? Thank you. That's unanimous. And then we have Ordinance 2019047, amending budget ordinance 2019001 in the amount of $379,000 to transfer from the municipal buildings and land capital reserve to the community center capital project the amount to cover the design contract with ADW Architects. Mayor, uh, question please. Uh, Pam, uh, after we move this from the municipal buildings and land capital reserve, what will be left in the capital reserve? Um, about $800,000. Okay, thank you much. Very good. Motion approved. Second. Mr. Smith makes the motion. Mr. Zinger makes the second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Thank you. That is unanimous. Okay, Hank. This okay. Is a big moment. The last one is consideration of resolution 2019070 approving the contract with ADW Architects for architectural services for the next phase of the community center pro community center project and authorizing the manager to execute the contract in an amount of $369,000. Is there a motion? I will make the motion. <laughs> <laughs> And I think, I, I'm not sure, it was Mr. Smith or Mr. Zinger? Mr. Zinger. Mr. Zinger made the second. Um, just as a, a brief point of discussion, folks, we've been working for about 14 months to get us to this point. We've had a number of community meetings. We've had a number of council discussions and presentations. And this, by the, uh, by the passage of this motion this evening, we will officially kick off the architectural drawings and planning for our community center. Um, I can't tell you how excited I am, and, and I know I, I'm expressing the excitement shared by the council members. This is going to be a landmark facility for our community. It's going to be a place where uh, folks from all ages can come together for programming, for opportunities to get to know each other. We talk about community building. Community building occurs only if you have places where your community can get together. And this is going to be one fine community center, and I'm, we're, we're very, very thrilled to get to this point. So with that, Call I'll the call question. the question. <laughs> yeah, call the question. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. That is unanimous. Very exciting. Ms. Walker. Yes. Um, the next item is Ordinance 2019-048. This is updating the Louisville Town Code by adding supplements 13 and 14. And for the audience, even though council has approved the various ordinances that will go into the code, officially to go into the written copy they must also approve this ordinance any questions for joyce and retain a motion make a motion to approve okay Ms. mock makes the motion mr smith makes the second any discussion <coughs> all those in favor please say aye. aye aye any opposed thank you that is unanimous Ms. walker you want to close the road yes i do um this is ordinance zero <coughs> sorry two zero one nine zero four nine declaring a road closure for a Christmas parade to be held on Sunday, December 8th, 2019. Um, the Department of Transportation now requires an ordinance to be passed by council whenever one of their roads is being closed. So that's this ordinance. Very good. Entertain a motion. Motion. 
Second. Ms. Mock makes the motion. Mr. Zinger makes the second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. That is unanimous also. Hank, you have a contract to make our town look festive. Yes, we have consideration of resolution 2019069 authorizing the manager to execute a contract with Elite Landscape Service and Nursery Incorporated of Pofftown in an amount not to exceed $11,863 to place Christmas decorations. Very good. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Franklin makes the motion. Ms. Monk makes the second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. That is unanimous. Down to administrative reports, Hank. I think you're the lead off here. Yeah, that's correct. I'm going to do um, events at Shalford Square. The first will be, I guess it's this Saturday, in the, ten, the 12th, concert, the music under the stars with Blue Highway. The concert starts at 5 o'clock p.m. Next, we'll move to the 19th of this month, where we will have Shalloween. starts at 1 o'clock p.m. in the square. Then moving slightly into the month of November on the 11th, Town Hall will be closed on the 11th for the observance of Veterans Day. And then I will finish out this announcement with letting people know that on the 23rd of November on Saturday, this will be the Saturday before um, Thanksgiving, we will hold another e-cycle event for the Town of Louisville residents. Very good. Okay, any questions for Hank on events? Anything else for us, Hank? No, sir. Very good. Ms. Walker, you have some things for us? I have two items I'd like to report. The first is on municipal <coughs> ordinance, ordinances that are enforced by criminal penalties. The state legislature has asked that this report be given by all towns and cities within the um, state. That was in 2018. Um, for our information, that did not happen with all of them. We have 500 plus town, cities, and villages. Only 100 plus um, provided that, one of which was, of course, the town of Louisville. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, at any rate, uh, they have extended that date. But I just wanted to let you know that we are in compliance for everything that the legislature has requested on that. Well done. Um, the second item is October 10th, which is today, is Electronic Records Day, and the state uh, wanted everyone to be aware that if you send anything to a town, city, or village, it becomes um, uh, available to anyone. It is, in fact, um, a public record. And uh, social media type items are all public record. Everything is based on content, and we have a uh, schedule that tells us when we can remove it. The town, thank goodness, has a company that keeps all of our social media information. So uh, if anyone asks a question, we can go back and get that information for them. Good. So we're good to go. I just wanted everybody to know. Just how long are we? How long are we required to keep those? Those. Uh, it depends. That's what I was saying. It's all. It all depends on content. Content. We okay. look at our retention schedule, and depending on the subject matter, tells us when we can remove it. Very good. Thank you. Any You're questions welcome. for Joyce? Very good. Hank. We did take an action at our briefing session last week. Yes, sir, we did. We voted to officially advise the Forsyth County Board of Elections that the town has no plans to place a referenda item on the March 3rd, 2020 primary ballot. Very good. Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming now to the second opportunity for you to address the council. If you have something that's near and dear to your heart that you'd like to share at this time, please come forward, state your name, your address, and share your thoughts. If council please, Bo Howe, 441 Roller Mill Drive in Louisville. Just like to announce on behalf of the Louisville Civic Club that we are pleased to sponsor again this year, um, prior to the election, the uh, Candidates Forum, which will take place on this coming Monday, October 14th, in the Louisville Library from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Uh, we have a wonderful field of candidates uh, this year. We have um, uh, the mayor who happens to be running unopposed, but we have nine other folks who are running for six uh, places on uh, town council. 
uh, with a varied uh, experience and background, and we look forward to hearing from them. And we invite everyone to come out. Um, if you cannot make it out in person, we are also planning on streaming this through uh, Facebook Live. So um, we look forward to um, uh, hearing from you, seeing you. And if you have um, questions that you would like to submit to the candidates uh, for consideration, uh, that is to be, those may be sent to Louisville Civic Club at Gmail. Dot com. Louisville Civic Club NC or just Louisville? Just Louisville Civic Club at gmail.com and we will consider those questions that are submitted. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Bill. Thank the Civic Club for undertaking this endeavor. This will be uh, 20 years? <laughs> A long time. Every year that, that the town has had elections. Okay, since, so uh, it would be 10 years. 19, 12 years. The first time we had elections and ever since then. Okay, so, very good. Well, thank you very much. I do urge you to pay attention on Facebook. If you can please attend in person, uh, it's at the library across the street. Uh, this is an important um, this is an important matter of business for our residents. These are the people that you will elect to serve you for the next two years. We make a lot of decisions and we spend a lot of money, so it's important that you have your finger in the pot, so to speak. Uh, make sure that you are aware uh, of your candidates. Make sure that you're familiar with them. Please just don't vote on name recognition because uh, we have a, a, a group of excellent candidates running and I think all of them will serve the town well, but please take some time to get to know them. Anyone else wish to speak at this time? Sergeant, did you have anything or you wanted to? You wanted the introduction, right? Here's Sarge. <laughs> uh, good evening, Council. Uh, good, good to be before you this evening. I'll be brief. Just a couple things that we've noticed uh, within the Sheriff's Office. We have had a string of some car break-ins in various neighborhoods and locations right in town and uh, right on the outskirts of, of Louisville. So as a reminder, we're just asking people to please take a little extra time remove your valuables from your car, lock it up. Uh, if you have motion lights or flood lights, leave those on. Typically, these folks are targeting unlocked cars. Now, they're just like a kid. If they go to the toy store and they see that toy in the window, it's gonna be enticing to them. So that's why we say, we encourage you, don't leave large amounts of money or firearms in your car, okay? Especially if it's unlocked. Just take a little bit of time and be vigilant. Ask your neighbors, help your neighbors to look out for each other. And if you see something that looks suspicious, just certainly give us a call. We're beefing up uh, patrol in these neighborhoods to try as a deterrent. So just uh, if you could spread the word to your neighbors and uh, these folks watching at home. Thank you very much. Now have a good evening. Thank you, Sergeant. Anyone else wish to speak? If not, there are forms also at the back of the room that you can fill out and hand to our clerk and she will make them part of our record. Council members, any comments? Any thoughts? I guess we're at the point we should ask for, actually, let me do this. Let me recognize Brian and Melissa and Derek and David and Jane, um, candidates for council. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, it's always good to see your faces and we'll swing the camera around and maybe in a second and let the let the folks at home know that you're here. But thank you for taking time to come out and, and uh, immerse yourself ahead of time in the business of Louisville. Thank you very much. With that, council members, we're entertaining a motion to adjourn. I agree. Second. Mr. Green makes the motion. Ms. Goldman makes the second. Any additional discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, folks. We're adjourned. <laughs>